He became sin who knew no sin that we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. The name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled, the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, the name of Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope. Messiah, the name of all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Messiah, Lord of all. Why this fear and unbelief? Is not the Father put to grief His spot the Son for us? And will the righteous judge of men Condemn me for that debt of sin Now cancelled at the cross? Jesus, all my trust is in Your blood Jesus, you rescued us through your great love. Complete atonement you have made, and by your death have fully paid the debt your people owe. No wrath remains for us to face. We're sheltered by your saving grace and sprinkled with your blood. Jesus, all my trust is in your blood. Jesus, you rescued us. Through your great love, 
How sweet the sound of saving grace How sweet the sound of saving grace Christ died for me How sweet the sound of saving grace How sweet the sound of saving grace Christ died for me Be still my soul and know this peace The merits of your great high priest Have bought your liberty Rely then on his precious blood Don't fear your banishment from God since Jesus set you free Jesus All my trust is in your blood Jesus You rescued us through your great love How sweet the sound of saving grace how sweet the sound of saving grace, Christ died for me. How sweet the sound of saving grace. How sweet the sound of saving grace, Christ died for me. Now why this fear and unbelief? Has not the Father put to grief His spotless Son for us? Purify this tainted soul I'm tired of living life the fool Soften up this hardened clay To be a servant, this I pray A reflection of you I long to be so your kingdom I will seek I surrender to your throne Oh, I surrender to your throne I will make my heart your home Oh, I surrender to your throne I've taken things I thought my own only to reap all I've sown You've given back the years I fought An ending love and grace you've brought Eternal hope and peace you bring And forever unto you I will sing And I surrender to your throne Oh, I surrender to your throne I will make my heart your home Oh, I surrender to your throne Forever unto you I will sing 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 And I surrender I surrender I surrender now And I surrender I surrender And I surrender now And I surrender And I surrender I surrender now And I surrender I surrender I surrender now Soften up this heart and clay 
to be a servant, this I pray. Well, Brian asked me if I would help uh, his day today, and because he has had a acting day and service this morning and this afternoon. So, uh, like a fool, I volunteered that I would help. <laughs> But uh, actually, I find a lot of pleasure in sharing God's word, the things that he has put on my heart and things. Uh, but I would like to start with a word of prayer for it. So, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and we come before your throne of grace in time of need. And Lord, uh, I do not want to speak. I trust your Holy Spirit will speak through me because those are the promises that you have given us. And so, God, we just ask that you would uh, come, edify us, build us up, encourage us, strengthen us, Lord, so that we might be vessels of honor and not dishonor. And, Lord, you are the one who receives all the glory and the praise. And in, it is in Jesus' name we say these things and ask these things. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be on the tail of um, Brian today. And uh, we're going to be in... Um, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, 3, and 4. And I promise to have you out of here before dawn. And, uh, but there's a couple things I wanted to kind of start us with. So, and also, by the way, I have to uh, read my notes from my phone because I don't have the luxury of a, something else there. So. But what I would like to start with is what God has really kind of convinced me of, and I believe is truth, uh, and I've shared this with others as well, but it's so important to know that without God's knowledge, God's understanding, and God's wisdom, we don't have a hope in this world to know and see the world for what it really is. It takes God's direction and God's revelation to teach us about himself and about what he has done to come into this world and to create in us and to make us conform to the image of his son. And without having godly knowledge and godly understanding and godly wisdom, we really don't have any hope at all. And as Brian has been teaching this over the course of a few weeks here now, what happens is all of a sudden you start getting all these people that come in with false doctrine because they're not uh, knowledgeable enough about what God truly has to say about his body and us as individuals and where that lands in our heart and our churches is important because without that direction, we really don't know what we're doing. And all kinds of forms of doctrine will come in, and false doctrines and teachings. So knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. <clears throat> and I want to read something from Oswald Chambers and his utmost source highest. Many of you may be familiar with the book. Each day he gives a, a thought about one of the verses in Scripture. And he starts and he says, and He commanded them that they should tell no one the things that they had seen till the Son of Man had risen from the dead. That is Mark 9.9. 9. As the disciples were commanded, you should also say nothing until the Son of Man has risen in you. Until the life of the risen Christ so dominates you, that you truly understand what he thought, what, what he taught while he was here on earth. When you grow and develop the right condition inwardly, the words Jesus spoke become so clear that you are amazed. You did not grasp them before. You did not grasp them before. In fact, you were not able to understand them before because you had not yet developed a proper spiritual condition. To deal with them. Our Lord doesn't hide these things from us, but we are not prepared to receive them until we are in the right condition in our spiritual life. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. John 16, 12. We must have a oneness with his risen life before we are prepared to bear any particular truth from him. Do we really know anything about the indwelling of the risen life of Jesus? The evidence that we do is that his word has become understandable to us. God cannot reveal anything to us if we don't 
have his spirit. And our own unyielding and headstrong opinions will effectively prevent God from revealing anything to us. But our, insatia our insatiable thinking will end immediately once his resurrection, resurrected life has its way with us. And I think that's so important. That, that really uh, tells us something. You know, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to make God known to us. The revelation that comes from our, the Holy Spirit to teach us anything of Jesus Christ. And Pastor hit on many of the things today about false doctrine, false teachers. And I would like to pick up on that. Uh, and I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, or verse 19. <clears throat> Uh, you'll love it, because I do read the King James. You all know that, right? right? So, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having th this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. <clears throat> so, we have this sure foundation of God that we stand on, and we are sealed with that knowledge knowing that God has redeemed us and has a purpose to make known himself through vessels, as we'll see here in a second, of honor and even dishonor. And sometimes you think, well, how can God use somebody that's a vessel of dishonor? Well, he does all the time. We see that. But here we know that God... Um, says here, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So there's something there that's a command. Uh, we cannot receive, as Oswald Chambers was talking about there a minute ago, unless we are yielded to God, we cannot receive the things of God. Uh, they're foolishness unto him. The natural man doesn't receive the things of God. So without the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, we can't overcome our sin. Uh, it's a futile exercise, yet we have a lot of people in the church today, many, who talk about sinless perfection, uh, that we're no longer sinners because we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and uh, those types of things that are just a lot of false doctrine. But he goes on, verse 23, 20, 21, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified and met for the master's use. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped a verse. 20. But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and met for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So, what I find interesting, what we see in the church today, I think, and I think it's pretty evident, we just stop and think and look from the lens of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from God's perspective, we begin to see that there is a lot of wolves, a lot of false teachers, a lot of darkness. And if we listen to what the Holy Spirit says, and if we go to God's word and allow him to teach us with a surety the things that are pertaining to godliness and truth, he'll use those things that are wicked and evil and dishonorable to teach us something about himself, that we can't depend upon man. We can't depend upon uh, churches. We can only depend upon Jesus Christ as our deliverer, as our sanctification, as our hope, as our knowledge, as our wisdom and our understanding. By him only can we come to this place of, of honor. So verse 22, he says, Flee also use youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I think there's a key there, out of a pure heart. We have to ask ourselves inwardly, do I have a pure heart? Do I really honestly 
have a pure heart. I'm not talking about sinless perfection. I'm talking about my attitude towards God. Is my heart pure in my thoughts and my, my outgoings? Excuse me. Do I really have a hunger and a thirst for truth and righteousness? Uh, my heart has to be pure. I, I can't. I can even probably deceive myself in thinking so. But uh, David said, examine my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me. You know, we have to ask God on a continual basis to reprove us, to, to instruct us in righteousness. <clears throat> because the natural man, which I still have a part of in this life before I'm fully redeemed, uh, is deceptive. And it's easy to be persuaded or swayed away from the truth. And it's, it's easy to get caught up in emotions, and it's easy to get caught up in false doctrine, false teaching. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives. So we don't want to get in these debates of unknown territory with somebody that's trying to explain to us about some doctrine that is, you know, we always use the phrase, something in the book of Enoch. Uh, you know, you're going to get led astray if you get in these conversations <clears throat> instead of sticking to God's word. It's so easy for us to doubt and begin to, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You know, why don't you know? Why don't you know? Because you're not grounded in the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom of God. Doesn't mean we're per perfect, but we have come to a place where we hunger and thirst for truth and righteousness. And in that capsule is the knowledge and understanding and wisdom of God. It's essential. <clears throat> it's not just having some understanding, light understanding of God. Thank you, Butch. I was going to do that before I started, but I'm old and I forgot. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. So, uh, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, <clears throat> apt to teach, patient. Patient. Apt to teach, patient. So, uh, there's no reason to quarrel amongst others especially in the house of God, uh, it, it, it does nothing but creates division and strife. And uh, again, I think it's because of lack of understanding. I think we have to learn to be patient with those people. When given the opportunity, we share the truth and trust that the Holy Spirit will teach them just as he did us. Because there was a point in my life where I was far from where I am now, and I'm still far from where I should be. But God has got me on the process of sanctification, and I'm learning, and I'm growing in that. <clears throat> and that's the work of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that I'm gaining from Brian other than I know Brian is teaching the Word of God. So when I listen to Brian or any other teacher, I want to weigh that against what Scripture says. And that's my responsibility to question or to seek, is this right or not right? Some things I don't have to question. I've come along, long, uh, come along enough that... I know some of the things are true, but some things uh, he may say that makes me think, you know, makes me question. So I want to check that against God's word. So <clears throat> and then he goes on. He says, uh, 25, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the, to the acknowledging of the truth. And... Uh, so we see that God uh, is the one who will grant repentance uh, to the acknowledging of the truth. Uh, when God says something in his word, I shouldn't question it. I just know it to be truth. And let it do its work in my life via the Holy Spirit to bring me to repentance if I've gone away, if I strayed away from the truth. I need to come back to the truth. And if I hold this defense of, 
you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to repent. I'm not going to, you know, admit that I was wrong. Well, what happens when we do that? There's a seed of pride that comes into us. And that seed is, as Brian pointed out today, it's cankerous. It's a sore. It's gangrene. It's poison. And it will eat at us. And it will destroy us. So be malleable. Be willing to be broken. Be willing to learn and grow. Uh, None of us have a corner on truth. Because Christ, we know, is the truth. And he alone is in his word. So, and he goes on, verse 26, And they that may recover themselves out of the snare, and and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Uh, If we don't know, if we don't have God's knowledge, and we don't know the truth, uh, we can easily be taken away and captivated and drawn away from the truth. And uh, Brian and I, I told Brian, I says, I, I think I'll be in chapter 3 and talking about what's going on in the last days. And we agreed, and I, I agree, that this is not talking about, even though you can qualify that for the, the world and the non-believer, but I believe what we're about to see here is it qualifies the truth of the condition of the church. And the church is in dire straits right now. Uh, We are facing a great falling away more than ever before. We need to to hold firm to truth and not waver in that and not be deceived by it. And the reason and and the way we are not deceived is we know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So when we're grounded in truth, and Jesus is the truth, and we walk in the light as we talked about today in Bible study, it dries out darkness. And I don't have to be so concerned about whether this is right or that is right, because I'm walking in what is truth. And I'm walking in Christ. And he gives me revelation. But apart from that... If we walk in darkness, if we walk in false doctrine, if we walk in the uh, lack of understanding and knowledge, this is what happens. Let's read this. This know also. Wait. This know also. What do we know also? Well, what preceded that? What was he talking about? All these things that were devoid, all these things that are you know, wood, hay, and stubble, and all these things that we need to know that sets us free and away from, you know, darkness, uh, striving and quarreling and all these things. This know also, so he's adding to the list of things he talked about already, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Are we in perilous times? Is the church in perilous times? Absolutely is. It absolutely is. More so than ever before. Uh, The body of Christ is on, uh, what do you call it, uh, when somebody's dying of a heart attack. Life support. Life support, thank you. (laughs) Very good. Yeah, it's on life support, really. I mean, that's a figurative way of looking at it, but it really is. And we know it doesn't, the gates of hell can't prevail against it. We know there's a remnant that will always be there. But I think because of the lack of knowledge and understanding and the ability to to seek God, to study to show thyself approved unto God, as Brian brought out earlier, we lack those things, so we're easily swayed with all this stuff. And so the church has got this problem, and it's inside the church. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Any, Any thought about that? Oh, yeah. In the church, folks, not outside the world, they've always been lovers of themselves. We're talking about in the church. Lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to the parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, 
traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We're in bad way, and uh, I think uh, Paul is telling Timothy, as they viewed, perhaps they were living in the last days as well, I think, though, we're seeing this magnification of the great apostasy and the falling away in the church. And these are the things that people are thirsty for because they don't retain the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of God. They're listening to this guy and that gal and this thing and that thing. And they're not studying the word of God. They're not seeking God with all their heart. They don't have a pure heart. They're just lackadaisically going through, give me something so I can feel good about myself and I can feel good and we can go on our happy, merry way. And I see that more and more and more in the church. And it's really uh, disheartening to see that. And, you know, if it's disheartening to me, I can't imagine what it does to the Lord. It grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves God in a great way because he's given himself, you know, how shall we neglect so great a salvation? Why are we not understanding that without him, we are nothing, can do nothing? And so don't look to men. Don't look to tradition. Don't look to, to religion. We need to keep our mind and our hearts and thoughts content in the one who is truth. And Jesus Christ came to do that for us. He, gave, he came also so that in this house, which I believe is the church, you know, he says there back in uh, 20, there's vessels of gold and of silver. You know, we are to be a royal priesthood, holy and blameless before God. Does that mean sinless perfection? No. But what it does mean, at least I think to me it means, is to have a pure conscience, a pure heart, an attitude that seeks God and wants to know him. Do I fail? Absolutely. Do I sin? Yes. But my attitude is to seek him. That's, my, that's where I want to be. Uh, because I've seen what this world can give me. I've had what this world can give me. And it's been brokenness and heartache and trauma and division. You know, I've been in several churches where there's been nothing but these splits. And I know you've had them here as well. Why? Because they're seeking their own. They're, they're lovers of self. You know, they're, they're boasters, proud, arrogant. You know, I know. I understand. Too bad you don't. You know, that kind of attitude, right? I mean, that's just kind of how it is. There had, see, and this is why I think he's talking about believers. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. They have a form of godliness. All the religiosity, all the nicety is packaged up in their pride, their boasting, their unthankfulness, their unholiness, but yet they see themselves as being righteous and good and holy and just and but they don't see themselves as naked and destitute like Jesus talks about the church of Laodicea. That, you know, you're naked. You don't even know it. You, you have nothing. You know, you think you know, but you don't. You're living a life uh, that's never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Or they're, they're having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So, I mean, how many of us all, without, you know, you don't have names, and I don't think you would anyhow, but why would, why do people think that they have a right relationship with Christ when I think they know deep in the heart of themselves, maybe that's because they are deceived, but I think a lot of them knowing and willingly are being deceived. They don't want the truth. Why? What does the truth do? We'll see that in a minute. We know what the truth does. And God meant it for this purpose. But a lot of people just don't want to receive the truth. They just want to live life their own way. Uh, they want to be 
you know, false accusers. They want to be despisers of those that are good. Uh, you know, it's just the list is, is phenomenal. But we see it everywhere. Uh, verse uh, 6. And verse 6. For this sort are they which creep into... You'll love this, King James, if you never heard it this way. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. You like that, John? Love it. <laughs> but why are they being led away? Because of their desires. Because of their desires. Yeah, their lust. Yeah. The lust for power, the lust for greed, the lust for recognition. I'm somebody proud. I'm a woman. I'm a man. I'm this. I'm that. You know, who are you to tell me I'm a sinner? And you know, don't you know who I am? And so they're led away with that false doctrine. By, as we know, many of them are saying, you know, who? Uh, <laughs> I'll have to say it by name because I can't quote it exactly, but. Um, Live your best life now, or you have your best life now. What what is the quote? Joel. Yes, Joel Osteen. What's the quote? Your best life now. Live your best life now. Yeah. So he's in, he's in applying that there's something really good for you now, and there is that those who are in Christ. But his message is be a better person, try harder. There's nothing about the convicting word of God. Uh, Brian brought out the idea, too, that there are some who have really gone astray. Uh, they deny hell. I mean, they're, they're even like, hell don't even exist. It's a, it's a figment of your imagination. You create your own hell. Well, I don't know what's going to happen when those guys come to judgment, when they see the lake of fire. They might be in hell first, but they're going to the lake of fire soon if they don't repent. Because they're leading away all these people who are captive, captive, captivated uh, by their own lust. They're being drawn away. And uh, so he goes on. He says, ever learning and never, that's an important word, able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Never able. Why? Because they're allowing their lustful, sinful flesh to dictate what they want to perceive as truth. They deny the truth, and they resist it. And they're among us right now today, folks. They're in this church, and I, won't, I don't know who they are. wouldn't claim to know who they are, but they know who they are. There's people all over the world who claim to know Jesus Christ who are far from it. There's no desire in their heart to really seek him, to know him, to understand him, to have the wisdom that gives me the discernment so I can fight through this sinful world, so I know what is right and what is wrong. Without that knowledge, without that understanding, we don't have a hope, guys, gals. We just don't have it. And so I can't come to my own understanding and my own knowledge without... Uh, being wrong, let's put it that way. That's what my knowledge and understanding will do for me, my wisdom. It'll lead me astray because I'm not seeking the Lord. And he goes on, he says, For as Janus and Jambres without, withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now, who were Janus and Jambres? They were magicians. They were ones who practiced divination. They threw down the, the uh, staff, and their staff turned into a snake as well. But we do know that the snake that turned from Moses ate that one. The point is this. There's a lot of falsity in the church that looks right and looks real. But without knowledge of God, without understanding, without wisdom, you'll be deceived. And that's just a plain fact. 
You know, God is the one who reveals things to us, just like Oswald Chambers was saying. You know, it's, it's, those are hidden things, but they don't come naturally. We have to seek it with all our heart, soul, and mind. And uh, God will begin to make himself known to us. We can be easily deceived. The word reprobate, I looked that up, I found that interesting. It's unapproved counterfeit. It's counterfeit. There's a lot of trickery going on in the church today and a lot of promises, empty, vain promises, that sound good. They even have a great production to reveal to everybody. But what's it doing? It's drawing them away from the truth. And they get caught up in this. And then, you know, pride begins to enter in. And you can begin to elevate self. Sorry about that. I think, I think pride was already there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really why. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it, 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 it appeals to their desires. And those trials will come. And what happens in trials? It, what comes out of you in that trial is what's already there. Right. It just comes out in the open, and you actually see what's already there. Right. Yep. All right. Let's go on, verse 9. <clears throat> But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Uh, it's not going to go well. Uh, they're going to be revealed. They already are. If you and I, who are called, teach the truth and expose these vipers and snakes and false prophets for who they are, uh, they'll be exposed. And many of them are being exposed. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. But God is going to take just simple lump of clay, like you and I, and magnify his name. And he's going to give us the truth, and he does. And uh, we need to expose those liars. And that's just what they are. I'll just say it flat out. They're liars. Uh, and they do not know the truth. You know, Paul said in Romans that uh, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They just don't have an understanding. Uh, because they have all the attachments of worship that were under the law. They thought by doing certain things they can please God by these things. But never was repentance a part of the requirement of, the, of them. They did not repent. And so anyway, they go on. He goes on. He says, uh, uh, but thou, verse, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 9. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But... Thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. So, he's like, you know what I have been telling you is the truth. These are false prophets. This is the result of living a life in denial to the truth. This is what it produces. Proud, arrogant, lovers of self. And that's what we have in the church. I mean, it's permeated. It's really a lot of it. And, you know, I'm at fault in many things. I understand that. But there's a sense of people that are among us, not just here, I mean in the church in general, who don't see it. They refuse to believe it because they see themselves as a good, good person. And so that elevates pride and, and brings in all sorts of wickedness. And they're deceived because somebody's telling them, you know, hey, you're a pretty good Joe, you know. You, you really are. And don't let anybody ever tell you not. You know. So Paul's like, I've set an example. This is my life. A manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Then he goes on, verse 11. Persecution, affections, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, 
what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. What did Paul understand? That his safety was in Christ Jesus. Did that pr protect Paul from dying ultimately? No. But it didn't matter to Paul because his focus wasn't on self. His focus wasn't on his pride or his knowledge or his understanding. His focus was on Christ. And he knew that that was his strength and his only hope. And so he was able to suffer persecution and endure through that because Christ was his way out. And until that day came, until that appointed day came, there was nothing they could do to him that mattered. Yeah, he suffered shipwreck and whippings and, you know, you know the list. It's just an unbelievable amount of things that man went through. But that didn't waver Paul because he knew the truth and the truth set him free. So that's what he's trying to encourage these believers. Don't fall for this stuff. Then he goes on, yea, and all, this is always one that's got me, and all that li will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Is that a maybe? No. It's shall, will suffer persecution. And that's an inter another interesting word. It means to put to flight. Like a hunter pursuing a catch, desiring to overtake. And these false teachers and these false prophets and these wicked people are doing everything they can to pursue you, to get you, to draw you away from the truth. That's the persecution I think Paul's talking about. Yeah, there's physical persecution. I understand that. But these false teachers, in the context that we're looking at here, I think it's these false teachers who are bringing, taking these people away from the church because they haven't learned to grow they ha or they haven't learned to stand in truth. Uh, they're listening to what the pastor says, and that's their, their identity, and that's their strength, that's their Christ alone. So they're easily drawn away. And these false teachers, these liars, know that, and they're after you. They're after those people who aren't strong in the word. And so they're easily drawn away. 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And the word there, wax worse, means an increase to cut forward. It's like they're hacking away at the truth, and it doesn't matter what they do and who's in the way, they're coming after you. It's increasing more and more and more, and we see that today. It is rampant in the church. And we need to be aware of that. You, you see that when you come against false teachers. Absolutely. How, how the followers of those individuals attack. Absolutely. Bring it up. Yeah, absolutely. It's terrible. It is terrible. It's, it's, it's an unholy alliance. It's an unholy period. I mean, it's just that's what he described there a little bit ago. They're unholy. They're unthank unthankful. They don't praise the Lord for what God has given them. They're in their own deceit and their own lusts have gone away. They're listening to somebody else telling them they're a great person. You don't have to listen to all these, this nonsense. So anyway, he goes on. And, uh, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. How did we learn them? The Holy Spirit. He has taught us. Be assured. What God says in his word is truth. And there's no deviation from that. There may be things you don't fully understand as a babe in Christ. There's a lot of things you don't know. But stay with it. God is going to teach you all things. He's promised that. Quit going outside the church. And Brian mentioned it. YouTube and this, that, and that tube, and you know the TV tube, whatever. And Stop. Some of those things can be beneficial, but if you aren't growing enough in it, you don't have discernment. You don't know. And so you're easily drawn away. Well, even with good teachers, I found it creates a schizophrenia. Yeah. Right? You're, yeah. Because the, you're following a pastor that knows his local flock, and he's teaching to them, 
and you're also in a local church that they're teaching to you, and now all of a sudden you're you're, you're being taught two different ways. It could be the same thing. It could be true. Absolutely. But, it, but it's it doesn't deal with you locally right now with what your pastor is seeing you deal with or yeah. your local body is dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And it, it creates us like a spiritual schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. It, it just is too. All scripture. Yeah. They pick and choose, and they might as well rip out half the Bible right. because they're never going there. Right. The Book of Job is one they some people really don't like. Well, that that does happen too because yeah. when when like when you're following other teachers too, you you'll start to pick certain verses. Yeah that work applied to justify yourself in different ways instead of going through it like you would yeah. under the teaching and leadership of your local church. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting you said that, John, and I know some people know this story about me, but when I first got saved, I would witness to people and tell people about this and that and the love of God and things. But that's the first six chapters of my Bible. <laughs> and people would be like, well, why? I was like, well... Because when somebody would start challenging me and say, how do you know that's true? I'd take a page out and rip it out. And they'd be like, well, what are you doing? I was like, well, how do you know that's not true or that is true? And, I mean, you're confused. It's either all true or it isn't. You either believe the whole thing or don't believe it at all. And if you believe the whole thing, it's going to do something to you. We'll see that right here. And that... the Verse 15, and that form of child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make these wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we know what the scripture is and what, or what it does for us. And just like a child, the Holy Scriptures are given to us. And we grow as we begin to grow and we learn and grow in the truth and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It begins to do something. It, it reproves us. It's doctrine. It gives us sound doctrine to stand on, firm, firm ground. It reproves us. It corrects us. It instructs us unto righteousness. I mean, how do I know what's really right or wrong, right? I mean, I have a moral compass as an unbeliever that tells me the law that God put in my heart says don't commit adultery, don't kill, don't steal. I know those things morally. But it goes beyond that. It's the righteousness that delivers us from this body of death. And how does that do that? It's by God's word that gives us Knowledge and understanding that delivers us from this present world. We are in it, but we're not a part of it. And that's a great promise. So that I'm perfect. Not that I'm perfect, perfect, but I'm made perfect in Christ Jesus. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God predestined those good works from the foundation of the world that we should walk in them. When I'm listening to Joe Blow over here tell me, if I give $100 million, I'm going to be a really good person, and God's going to secure a special place with me in heaven. So you better give that. And so it feeds on me. It tells me, like, hey, you know, he said if I do this, I'm, I'm going to, this is one of the good works I'm supposed to be doing. Don't be deceived. You know, we know that's not true for those who are in Christ, that really walk according to his will. Let's wrap it up in the next four verses here. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Who does he charge us before? God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you've been told, you know, now, Obey. Don't go off doing your own thing and listen to somebody else and get all deceived and wrapped up in this carnal world because that's what's going to happen if you do. So you've been charged. This is the truth. Obey it. Walk in it. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. 
Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. There again, it recapitulates the, what he said there in 16. It's, it's the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ. It's for that reason. Man, if we didn't have the Word of God, where would we be? We'd be destitute, alienated, detached from God, having no hope in this world, period. Because there ain't nothing in me that's going to merit any righteousness of God. I'm a filthy sinner in the eyes of God. But yet he loved me enough, he gave himself for me. So that I might be a partaker of his divine nature. That's an amazing God we serve. For the time, verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I would like to suggest to you guys tonight, the time has come. It is here. And we see that the evidence of it is everywhere. I mean, it's just heart-wrenching to hear some of these people and their doctrines and their philosophies and their lies and people buying into it and paying big money so that they get blessed with the handkerchief of whatever. I mean, seriously. It's just like, you know, this handkerchief is going to give you some peace or something or heal you? Yeah. But it comes with a small attachment of nine ninety five. So <laughs> that's how you get it, right? So the time has come. I mean, we're in it, folks. I, I mean, that's my conviction. That's my belief. Uh, there should be an urgency in our heart and soul to preach the gospel, the truth. Because without it, Many are going to go astray. Many are going to not come to the knowledge of the truth. So in the body, we're here to help and edify and build up one another. Those who have been given uh, much, much is required. So uh, we don't have no excuse. We should be teaching others and edifying others and building them up and correcting when there is a correction needed in love. He goes on, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. After their own lust. Don't give me this message of I'm a sinner. Don't tell me I'm a bad man. Don't tell me I have to have Christ in order to be a good person. It's everywhere. Um, they would rather have the jingle bell, you know, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny. I'm not saying those things themselves ain't wrong, even though I do believe that. I'll just throw that out for anybody who does choose to do those things. But the truth is, it's misleading. I remember when I was a child, and... Uh, I was anticipating Santa Claus. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Santa Claus. He's coming tonight. And my mom and dad were drunks. And uh, my dad come in trying to carry the bike, and he fell down the stairs. <laughs> so I got up and I looked, and I was like, there's my dad with the bike I was wanting. I'm thinking to myself, he ain't Santa Claus. <laughs> They've been lying to me. Stealing my bike. Yeah, he's like, it was really a... a it deflated my trust. I was like, they've been lying to me. There ain't no stupid Santa Claus. In case anybody's in here who believes there still is, I'm sorry, there isn't one. <laughs> but that's what it did. Oh, it, no. And if I don't have the tr confidence and the trust that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, I I'm, I'm looking to fairy tales and man-made religions, and all the things that go attached to that. And we'll wrap it up with this here. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Hmm. Boy, what a disturbing statement that is, huh? And shall be turned unto fables. Turn away. By the way, that's what I was going to call this message, was turn away. And uh, why do they turn away? Because the truth pierces. 
The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. And you, as somebody who doesn't want to believe that, is like, no, don't tell me that. So, that's the conclusion. I don't know if I'm over, under, in between, overdone, medium well. <laughs> But I'm finished. Any thoughts? Yeah. Medium rare. Medium rare. <laughs> okay. No, it, you're all things to all of us. An itch has to be scratched, right? What's that? An itch has to be scratched. What has to be scratched? I'm sorry. An itch. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So they, they, they'll never get enough. Yeah, right, right. So that's why these entertainment preachers and teachers in these churches, they have to go more and more extreme yeah, to keep people yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. And, and in a lot of cases, um, a lot of people know they're in error. That's why they heap yeah. to themselves teachers to... Yeah, they don't want the truth. To yeah. silence the voice of yeah. uh, conviction. Conviction. Mm -hmm. That you know is there. Um, yeah. But I think sometimes as a babe in Christ, you don't know the difference. You yeah. Know? And yeah. Because I can remember having my desires, you know, uh, how can you put it? embellished and thinking mm -hmm. it was the spirit mm -hmm. and it wasn't it was mm -hmm. my it was my own desires mm -hmm. so but can we say that god knows the heart yeah there's different categorizations yeah. of deception yeah. because yeah. um sometimes it's because we're children in the faith right and we right. have to grow right in the faith but you're talking yeah. about false teachers also yeah. that's different yeah. to yeah. you know like a christian that right doesn't know any different and then you you grow in the truth and you realize you know that yeah. a lot of things you've learned yeah, wasn't yeah. quite correct yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. that we henceforth be no longer children yeah and yeah, yeah. I, I realized early on in my christian walk that the evangelism has to start within the church walls oh yeah you know, because there are so many lost people. When I went to church for three years, living in sin, and mm -hmm. our pastor knew that I was in sin. He never called me out. I never heard him. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm good to go. I raised my hand. I said this prayer. I'm good to go. And yeah, I knew this Jesus, but it, deep down I knew that I didn't want to give up my sin. Mm -hmm. I had this pride of this life mm -hmm. that I was living. I, was, I felt pretty good about where I was at even though I, I realized after the fact that I was miserable. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't give up my sin. It was pride. I think yeah. after three years, you should have been called out in it, right? I, I should have been. Because I know Absolutely. sometimes you get people that come to church, mm -hmm. they, they're in sin, and you do give a certain amount of space sometimes, but three yeah. years is too long. Three years, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it took the Holy Spirit to slam dunk you. Well, yeah, it wasn't until I heard... I heard the law outside of church mm -hmm. that God saved me. It wasn't within the church. Mm -hmm. It was outside of the church that I heard the law. I mm -hmm. heard true preaching, and I heard the true gospel. I mm -hmm. realized what Jesus, I heard about Jesus that died on a cross for me and paid for the sins of the world, but I didn't understand that, that how wicked I was, that I needed that. Right. Because I thought I was pretty good. I was comparing right. myself to the rest of the world. Sure. It's easy to compare myself to people sitting next oh, yeah. to me, right? Oh, yeah. But when I compare myself to Christ, that's mm -hmm. when that's when it becomes real. Mm -hmm. That's when it comes alive. Paul Stewart, huh? Hard. But it was, it was pride. And, and so through evangelism, uh, I've learned, um, through evangelism, through the youth group, um, through teaching and being in the church as long as I've been, that the reality is, is people have, have pride. They don't want to give it up. Right. They don't want to die to self. Right. But most of all, they don't want to give up their own sin. Right. It's always a sin that's mm -hmm. holding them back mm -hmm. from fully committing or, or submitting mm -hmm. themselves to Christ. They yeah. don't want to give it up. After all, my sin, my flesh just loves it and craves it. Yep. Yeah. Makes me feel good about me. The yep. Word will save you. Amen. From, from the Word of Faith Church and stuff. It did me. Proverbs and in the second Timothy says, oh, I left Prometheus in, in some place. He was sick. Paul couldn't get him healed. Right. And, but Ben Hinn could walk in there and probably they'd all <laughs> fall down. Yeah, give me a break. <laughs> it was the word of God that, that broke me loose from all that garbage. Amen. That's what it's meant Paul to do. Paul calls it dung. 
So yeah. with, with true preaching of the word in the church and discipleship as the yeah. church is designed, and, and being able to reprove and correct yeah. and rebuke. And you, that's how this stuff is corrected. And yeah. that's not happening in the church today. No, it's not. At all. No. I, I'm not talking about our church. No, I I'm know. About and I thank God for Brian, but, and Pastor. Yeah, right? we, we he, see that he sees discipleship it. in this church. I'm, yeah. I'm often convicted by my own messages, you know, yeah. and I think you yeah. guys understand that. Yeah. I think God, when he does John's Gospel, yeah. I'm sure he's been convicted a time or two while yeah. he's been preparing a lesson, right? Well, yeah, just one. Just one. <laughs> I testify to that. <laughs> it was only once. And we're all here to correct each other with the Word of God. Amen. Right? We sit around and have a good well, time. That's what it all yeah. boils back down to. Though. It's, it's all about the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. We stray away from that. We try yeah. to find it from external sources. I think yeah. another, another extreme is sometimes uh, people in their immaturity Think that we can go around correcting people, you know, and, yeah. and we've seen that where it yeah. causes damage, you know. We've seen people yeah. get into apologetics and yeah. get very prideful with yeah. it. Well, but we, Oswald well, Chambers said that in his thing there. He's like, you don't know enough. Yeah, we have to recognize it's the word of God yeah. that has right. the authority yeah. to change people. Right. It's not. It's not me by my own intelligence yeah. that can change people. It's got to be. Right. It's got to be the Word of God. And in correcting, I've got to consider my own sin first, yeah. and my own tendency to believe error, yeah. and remember where the Lord brought me from. And yeah. that gives you, like uh, like what you were reading, a, a gentleness, a meekness of spirit, yeah. a fruit of spirit, mm -hmm. which is easier then, you know, because then, then you're operating in the fruit of right. the Holy Spirit. Which yeah, an example, saint. when I first got saved, I went to my mom and dad's house, and I told my dad, I'm a saint. Oh, are you? <laughs> Walk through that wall, then, if you're a saint. Well, I didn't know enough to be quiet. I was stupid and opened up my mouth, and I was trying to tell him something like I thought I really knew what I was talking about. I didn't know. I was being dumb, you know, ignorant. I, I had a zeal, but not according to knowledge. There was something lacking in me. I didn't have that understanding yet I you know I didn't know how to even answer my dad you know I was like um, I can't walk through the a wall. lot of times we can present <laughs> truth in a very agitating way um, yeah because I know as a new believer I made a JW curse on my doorstep you know he slipped <laughs> up but I was I was agitating him I was mm -hmm. intentionally agitating him I kept bringing up the cross the cross mm -hmm. he was like no it's a steak and I'm like no it's a cross <laughs> And I was irritating him, and I actually took pleasure in irritating him, which showed my sinfulness. Yeah. You know, he packed up his belongings yeah. and left, yeah. and I'm still yelling at him as he's leaving the yard, you know, and I'm like, how immature I was at yeah. that point that right. I didn't care enough for that guy, you know, that I presented the truth to him and, and through the fruit of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but rather I, I was feeding my own ego. Mm -hmm by bashing that fella, mm -hmm. and I actually wore it as a badge of pride that I made him sin, which is terrible, you know? Right. But that was a bad thing on my part. God can know? even use that, though. Yeah. He, yeah. Well, he, he, used, that guy. he uses false teaching to yeah. save people as yeah. well. I mean, but I was a babe in Christ then, mm -hmm. and, and very immature, so. Well. Still am in some things immature, but, you know, we won't go there. <laughs> Anybody have anything else they want to add? If not, who wants to volunteer a closing prayer? Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's volunteering. <laughs> he, he volunteered you. <laughs> of course. A oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this great gospel. Father, let us not ignore this gospel, but let us dig into it. Let us learn more and more. And we know, Lord, that it's you that's behind it all. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. So we thank you for salvation, and we thank you that you put us on this road to sanctification. And I would ask that all my brothers and sisters realize that this job of sanctification is yours as well as being saved. So guide us, Lord. Guard us. And give us strength. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.